Hello, and welcome to Of The People. What a difference a day makes. The day, of course, is November 5th and Trump's landslide. But since November 5th, you have to look at everything that's been happening, right? Nationally, Senator Schumer, that we, who's the Senate Majority Leader, soon to be ex-Senate Majority Leader, we call him Schomer Schumer, for those of us in the know, has now done one of the great pivots in history. He is now a champion of bipartisanship since the Trump election. He is cautioning his Senate colleagues to not misread the will of the people. I think Senator Schumer can take great solace in the fact that I don't think anyone is going to misread the will of the people. And let's not forget that Senator Schumer is the same person who was, if they had control of the Senate, was championing the ending the Senate filibuster, right? Eradicating the rights of the minority in the Senate, passing a national abortion, ab abortion rights law, and expanding and packing the Supreme Court. What happens after he loses control of Senate? Now he is a convert to bipartisanship. You can't make this stuff up. And as far as the law is concerned, in this case, voting law, it seems that voting laws only apply to Republicans, at least if you're in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, which up until yesterday was still counting votes illegally, according to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court in the McCormick Casey recount, which clearly Senator-elect McCormick is going to win. And then there is, of course, the fact that Bruce Springsteen, Cher, Babs, Sharon Stone, am I missing anybody? Rob Reiner, Robert De Niro have still not booked their tickets out of the country. And I think we're all waiting for that. But on a serious note, since November 5th, internationally is where you're seeing things really change. Qatar, which was housing the Hamas leadership, has kicked them out. Now, interestingly enough, they end up in Turkey, which is a NATO country. So if Israel continues to target Hamas leadership on, in, on NATO country soil, that's going to be interesting indeed. But Iran is now changing their tune even before Trump takes office, and they are pushing for a ceasefire between Hezbollah and Israel. I can't imagine why. It harkens back to the days because I was around during the Iran hostage crisis uh, under President Carter, and the minute Ronald Reagan got elected and sworn in, the hostage crisis was over. Seems pretty familiar. In Afghanistan, the Taliban are now calling for a new chapter of relationships with the U.S., and even China's Xi Jinping is calling for cooperation between the countries. That one I think you got to take with a grain of salt. Against this backdrop, there was just the meeting of APEC, not to be confused with OPEC, which is the oil-producing countries in the Middle East. APEC is the Asian Pacific Ec Economic Cooperation. They had a meeting there. Who's front and center in the photo op? Xi Jinping. Our sitting, our president, sitting U.S. President Joe Biden, whether you like him or not, was not only front and center, he was back row, and he wasn't even behind Xi Jinping. He was back row, second one from the end to the right, way back here. I am a Kremlin watcher from way back in the days of the Soviet Union, and where you sat on the dais was all important. It is the height of disrespect in, in all of this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have said this till we're blue in the face, that elections matter. But the hard work is now ahead of us. That's the state of the world we're inheriting. And reforming big government and restoring America's foundational values is where the work needs to begin. And if you're looking for Washington, D.C. to solve your problems because Trump is going to save us, it's, it is hugely important that you have President Trump in office and that he's going to try to rein in big government. But in terms of restoring America's foundational values, that starts in our communities and in our houses of worship. I mean, Erica, as you and I were talking about, the Pentagon can't even balance their budget balance their budget or get through an audit statement seven times in a, in a row, but they're in the right direction. You have FEMA who was targeting or avoiding Trump voters or people with Trump voter signs in terms of doling out aid or signing people up for FEMA aid. And the reason they gave it was really instrumental because Trump voters are, quote, more likely to be hostile. Where else do we see that sort of rationale or ask backwards logic? Anyone who is a um, person of faith or a devout person of faith, those are also people who are more likely to be hostile, according to the federal government. 
the federal government still sees conservative Christians and people of faith as the enemy. And if you don't believe me, search the term Christian nationalism, and there's a new term I just learned, radical traditionalist Catholics, right? So those changes start in the community. They start in our places of worship. And it's that harbinger of change or bringer of change that I think Trump and others will bring about. And that's really going back to America's foundational values. And that is the monologue.